on a sunny spring morning in Darwin. This is unique. All road markers and street signs point to one destination. How do you do that? <laughs> How do you roll that twine on there and make it round? It's a question that's been asked thousands of times. This is unique. The giant twine ball caught the attention of Dan Schmidt from Maryland. He drove cross country just to see it. A lot of perseverance, <laughs> a lot of bales of hay, look at that. <laughs> but even people who grew up here still roll with it. I remember going by as a kid, seeing it uh, get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's so big and that's the biggest in the world. And it was all done by one man. Weighed 21,140 pounds. In 1950, Francis Johnson began twining, though no one really knows why. And I can't say that I know exactly the reason either. A lot of people say, why did he do it? He did it because the twine was there and he had the time. Co-Mayor Josh Johnson among those who has tried to unravel the mystery. The how is less mysterious. Johnson used twine from his family farm. And when other people got word of what he was doing, they donated as well. He would square knot it all together and spool it up. And as it got bigger, he needed bigger tools. Eventually, he rolled it with a railroad jack, which also helped keep it round. He finally finished in 1979. Took him 29 years to do this. Yeah, four hours a day, every day. It's 12 feet tall, 40 feet around, 17,400 pounds. Nearly nine tons of string. And in 1991, it was moved by flatbed truck from Johnson's farm to Town Square. A gazebo was built around it, alongside a museum right next door. But that wasn't the first time it was moved. Now, here is I've Got a Secret. In 1958, Johnson flew it by plane to New York City to be on the show I've Got a Secret. That was just the beginning of its celebrity status. Weird Al Yankovic wrote a song about it, which the mayor says really helped bring twine ball awareness to the rest of the world. He estimates that about one third of their visitors are now Weird Al fans. It's like their mecca. It's kind of a required pilgrimage for them, for them to take at some point. Today, the town of 350 people celebrates their prized possession every August. Ripley's, believe it or not, once tried to buy the twine ball from Darwin, but the city said no. Because as it nears its 70th birthday, they are now stewards of the sphere, and it's hard to remember the land before twine. The community uh, is exceptionally proud to display it. Everybody, they would say it's the twine that binds in Darwin. In Darwin, John Lordson, WCCO 4 News.